happening tonight I got a feeling that the cards just ain't right I'm so salty, must not give in to rage And I'm wondering what those rollers will say Scarves to the left of me, the cheaters to the right Here I am, gonna roll a derby tonight Gonna roll a derby tonight Gonna roll a derby tonight. And we're back. We are go. So All right. Um, yeah, as always, the challenge: how do we start our casts? It's the age-old question. Well, we always did start. You leaving your deal <laughs> over the countryside in Hong Kong? Yeah, this is true. So if my audio is shit, I guess uh, I'm sorry, but not really that sorry. I usually usually have a headset. Today I don't have a headset. Might need to get a, a Patreon going to get Merlin a, a backup headset. Yeah, or a GoFundMe or something a like GoFundMe, that. GoFundMe, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I guess welcome back, you can see Rollers. Today we've got Butters. How's hey, going, how's it going, everyone? Yeah, good man. I am just coming down off our EC. It was super good fun. We had a really good time on the weekend. Cool, cool. And uh, we also have Jack from uh, Perth. Who is the winner of said EC? How's it going, Jack? No, oh, it's going all right, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was a good event. Yeah, it yeah. was a super good event. It was a, there was almost a domestic dispute within there with the the two finalists <laughs> being Jack Jack and Brona, <laughs> who were a couple. Yeah. There are a few uh, there are a few tensions at the table. I noticed halfway through. I assume it was just like play mistakes driving people insane. Yeah, no, it was a fair way into the day that was. So yeah. people are just yeah, making mistakes. Would... What was that like round six? Uh, yeah, that would have been round Doing six. Yeah. Yeah, I was. I was. So you guys win round five. What four rounds in a top four? Yeah, just top yeah, four. Just Two top people four. short of a top eight car, I think. Yeah. yeah so long. that was um, Jack Broner, who was the other finalist. Uh, myself and Dylan Sawley, who's um, or Hawley rather, Dylan over here, who plays Dragon fairly consistently, um, was the other other finalist. Or permanently Dragon. Yeah, I don't think he has the other cards. I think he just burns them all as they come in. I've never seen anything but green in his hand. But um, yeah, no, it was it was a really good day. I had some really good games. I made some horrible mistakes, but managed to recover from most of them. Um, and Jack Jack took the day out with Lion, Keeper of Earth, of all things. Um, so that's a talking point. Um, yeah, but he's not yeah. the only one. They've they've been around the place. There are all these. Stories keep popping up that Lion aren't as dumpster fire as people say they are. Yeah, I think Pack Two is going to be really important for a lot of clans. Um, yeah, and even even right now, I think Lion are Lion are good. I don't know. So Jack, being the the EC winner with Lion and Keeper of Earth, which are you know mm. it's a it's a contentious choice. What do you have a like an opinion on what it is that makes Lion able to be played properly versus what people are saying and why they're bad? Or uh, well, like I I don't know. I find it weird. Like I still don't think they're fantastic. You still run into games when like you feel like there's actually nothing you could do. Like I don't feel as though Lion has any of those situations like aggressive aggressively unless you get like. A charge on a on a big guy first turn, but so can mo most most clans can do that. So yeah. it I, I, it's just do you feel they're mm, quite high rolly, maybe. Or? Oh, they def or they can be. Like my my the deck I was playing was like whenever you play a Hisamori Toride deck, it it lends itself towards high rolling. Like I had of the of the six games that I won, it's like three of them were probably done by the second maybe third round like yeah, sometimes okay. it just happens if you de if like the person you're playing against doesn't draw cancels or like some way to mess with your with HMT you can do it with not too much problem with how many boosts line has yeah okay and dis and like displaying rings when they attack you first turn like that was kind of the the revolutionary part is if you can display first turn you get favor second turn, and then you have censures to just continuous pressure the second turn. Yeah, okay. Which, like, I never rated, like, the favor that high in line. Like, obviously for Ujiaki, it's it's important. Mm. But with three censure in the deck, it just 
lends itself to Rod's real, real aggression, just like chucking cards at them, and you can win really, really quickly. Yeah. So I noticed um, like we've got your deck list here, mm. um, which unfortunately I only get to see after it beat me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, I know it does seem um, like you've got like your Mo- Moaka Kabi guards in there, which don't really see a lot of play. Yeah. Early, and um, oh. and your Gunsos only occasionally. Yeah. Um, so it it looks to me like there's sort of a you've decided. All right. Look, realistically, I need the favor. So I'm just going to really go all in on that strategy and display a power obviously helps a lot with that. Mm. Um, and yeah, like three centuries is not super common these days. I don't think you see people running three. Yeah, no, it's, it's yeah, I only really see it risk. in Phoenix at the moment, right? Because they yeah. value their favor so country. highly. Yeah. Yeah. And they, well, they've got, they're like Lion, I suppose. Yeah. They've got those high glory stats around the place to use. And you've got your initiates. And so what, um, was it strictly the the influence points that pushed you towards Keeper of Earth? Uh, yeah, the the Seeker yep. of Earth just doesn't plainly doesn't have enough. Like you get you cut a display of power off for for nothing really. Like mm. I spam like spamming Earth Ring. Like I love the Keeper of Earth role in general. Like if I could pick a role ignoring cards and like to support it, Keeper of Earth is my favorite because the Earth Ring's just always value. And so, like, if the ring you run for your keepers is always value, you can you can run it without thinking about much else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You keeper initiates and. So and have, you, have you had a bit of a look over, Merlin? Yeah, I have. Um, I've definitely got. I've definitely got questions. Um, so, if you don't mind me asking, something that stands out to me though is the inclusion of two armament artisans. Yeah. So what's how? I mean, I know lions scrape the barrel sometimes for people, yeah. but. Like how how did he find his way into the deck? I don't. I'm trying to think whether he was. I ended up using him on the weekend or not. He's bounced in and out. It's he's specifically good in the crane matchup because with like purity of spirit and such. He purity of spirit someone else. He honors himself and maintains oh, yeah. it to kind of turn cancels off more often. Like that's yep. most of what I use it for. Uh. I don't. I don't remember whether he was in my deck. On on. I might honestly. I might have had three Carbe Guard and three Gunzo without any of him at on yeah, at okay. the event. But I play more of him mainly because I'll play way more of Broner at home and beating Crane is annoying. So yeah, he he's very good for that matchup. Like, is it, like he can be a two cost three one as well as like a non unique Bushi for Zentaro. Like it's why Carbe Guard and Gunzo are in that deck as well is also for Zentaro. Yeah. Right. Okay. Cause you so need the non unique. Let's remind ourselves of what Zentaro does. Cause he's not, he's not that common. Well, yeah. Not, sorry, not that, well, he just came out. He's, he was pack he's one. New, right? yeah. yeah. So that's so, the whole disguise keyword. Yeah. yeah. Did you did you get to steal any holdings? I did not get to steal any no. holdings. Oh. I don't think I've ever stolen a holding with him before. Disappointing. It's great ability. Oh, but... it's bloody hard to steal. It's it's very very hard, especially because we only had one crab, and I did not get a chance to steal an iron mine. But I suppose the thing <laughs> is that all all the non unique because it has to be a non unique holding. Yeah. Every non unique holding in the game that people realistically run. Yeah. They're, they're all blow up to do something, so people probably see it coming. There's only a couple it. you can steal genuinely, which is like Iron Mine or Forgotten, Forgotten Library. Library. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. uh, and uh, you can steal Shatomi Encampment just so they can't ready someone. <laughs> like, it doesn't help you at all, but it can be does, worth it just that... so they can't, so they don't have it. Does Shatomi Encampment need Unicorn or Cavalry? Uh, cavalry, I believe. Oh, uh, Lion have got two Cavalry people. Yeah, but... Yeah, I don't. They're not in the deck. <laughs> no, no one runs. Yeah, them. That's not no. Look, that's your seventh agent in the deck. Oh, is that oh, a yeah, cavalry? Yeah, one. Yeah, it is. No, you got one. I see. I, I one wouldn't even know use. that. It is a cavalry. Yeah, there you go. I could <laughs> steal that and ready your Matsu seventh legion. There you go. <laughs> the one Matsu seventh. I, I don't. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't think I've ever charged the Matsu seventh legion and not ended up like sacrificing it to to Hisamo Teride in the first place because it just gets you five <laughs> above and then dies. <laughs> Yeah, true that. So there's a hell of a lot of military pump in this. Um, there's no, there's no like court games in this, which is kind of surprising for me. Yeah. Um, what's with that? Oh well, uh, 
it just like this deck straight up ignores a political. Like it doesn't even it because you can. I don't know. It's a risky playstyle to play to consistently try and get like HMT activations to in order to yeah. break multiple provinces a turn. But going full bore into it with Legion of Ones and like three Legion of One, three Bonsai, three Charge, uh, three uh, Way of the Lion, um, strength in numbers. Like it's got. I feel as though with like one or two cards in a lot of conflicts, you can win by five very easily, especially on the first couple turns of the game where people don't have answers like straight away to them. Mm. The the yeah, only yeah. kind of get on top of someone. Yeah, really early. It, that's how I found it going on the week and was getting on top of people really early, and then it doesn't let up until they stronghold before they can react to it. Mm. But mm. so yeah, perfect cut I notice is is absent. Yeah. Um, how did that not make the grade? Uh the. The two military boosts wasn't enough. I don't like. I... But, but, but I mean, purity of spirit <laughs> realistically only does that. Like purity of spirit is probably only giving you a two most of the time. The purity and it's not permanent. Yeah, yeah. The purity of spirit, like, I find I find multiple uses for it. It's like it's, once again, I find it being more of a a crane matchup thing as well as like a very mm. like a very easy like buff uh, for like that rare um political run like it means you can threaten like yeah. if you have Taturi um you can threaten a political like break because he can just one card his at six political but then again it's also another thing that's good against Crane for cancelling um for turning off cancel like you, you, you play the purity of spirits in order to like if you don't cancel this your cancel is unenabled anymore yeah, okay. Um, and then yeah, and with the amount of two glory little guys, it it helps to both... Um, like, it doesn't work with pride, obviously. It removes it. But uh -huh. in uh -huh. the... What am I thinking? In the scorpion matchup, you're dishonoring my characters. Like, it's more... Def it often uses the defense yeah. against dishonoring my people. Yeah. Right? Yeah, no, I see that. Because yeah. I suppose... You can what you cancel out the dishonor, and then even if you hit the dishonored status, yeah, they sort of it almost shuts those cards off because they yeah. can't use them. At least for that combat, they can. Yeah, the and if I purity up like someone like Taturi to honored, it it's very much a deterrent against uh like someone like a Scorpion marker shaming anything because the yeah. the tag will still get ditched at the end of conflict. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's right. So they don't want to play that. So that means they would have to waste two cards in order to knock him actually down. Like they're not going to do it. Yeah. Um. Oh, okay. And then especially with Satori, who gives someone plus three glory, like point and click glory on him. Uh, like yeah. point and click honor, is good. Yeah. So you've yeah. got quite a bit of um pack one as. Yeah. There's a fair amount of pack one in there. there. So what do you got? You've got... We've got Purity of Spirit. We've got Satori. And Zentaro. Zentaro. I think that's it. Um, yeah, but that's... Yeah, more than most are squeezed in there. And you run zero attachments. So yeah. Zero swords? They're not big enough? No, uh, attachments... Like, A, I sometimes love not running any attachments because you know decks that play Let Go are just, like, sitting there with dead cards. Or decks that play yeah. Calling in Favors. Or, mm -hmm. like hand to hand in another lines like line splash you know most people love yeah. running attachment hate because it yeah. can be so deadly if you let attachments stick around if you don't run any attachments yeah they and i suppose it means your hand to hand is super safe isn't it yeah like, it's always like, so it's, you stuff. can play whenever you feel like yeah, yeah absolutely yeah so and you've got an extra opportunity to use it during the turn to mm. put to military conflict yeah mm. so did you run into any trouble at all? Were, were all the games fairly decisive? Was there anything in particular that made you um, backstep? Like, was there a, a nasty Tadaka at any point or anything like that? No, I, I honestly dodged the Phoenix matchup the whole day, which this deck is going to struggle a lot with Kurumori. Um, yeah. I just, I honestly, because it's only six games and when you had one Phoenix player, I just got lucky and didn't play them. Like, if I played them and had to try and get past Kurumori, I honestly... Mm don't know how this deck would do it, yeah. bar like an Ujiaki favor 
play. Like, I don't see it yeah. getting into enough political force to ever threaten a break on it, uh, other than that. Yeah, I suppose having to really go over. We actually, we had two Phoenix players, because Aaron abandoned the ponies, and he was on Phoenix, as I understand it. No, he was playing Unicorn. And... Oh, what? he was playing Unicorn? Yeah, he was playing Unicorn. Oh, okay, I thought he told me he was playing Phoenix, so no, I didn't play him on the day. He was planning on playing Phoenix, and then played Unicorn, but he wasn't very happy with right. it. Right. Yeah, okay. Because it's weird, because he is usually very strong. Maybe he's just the... Need some adjustments for the new meta and everything, but um, yeah, but yeah. So Merlin, do you have any other questions about the the deck? So, I strength in numbers busted my balls. That was a pain in the ass. I, I love strength <laughs> in numbers, man. Like it's in my deck. Mate. I feel it's like that card so just flew under the radar for so long. It's so suddenly, it's so so strong. It is. Yeah. Like I don't know why yeah. suddenly it just ha- has popped up on my radar. Like um, I don't know. Maybe too many words for me. I just didn't bother reading it all the way through before. It's that. It's, <laughs> It's because Send Home, realistically, isn't that strong if you aren't pushing the tempo yourself. Like, you send someone home, they're still standing, and they'll just run back at you again. But it's... Yeah, but it, so, like, it's always, like, seen as... Uh, you can't really run it because they'll just break and at an equal rate you are. And so, a deck like this can run it because you know that they won't be able to race you. Like, if it turns into a, a break race, yeah. you'll win every single time. And so you run, right. you run three of them. Two, yeah, you've got three conflicts. They've got two conflicts. Yeah, it's just it's mad. So, um, so my question actually, you mentioned that you're kind of weak in political conflicts, hmm. which I noticed, I noticed as well. Um, and I was wondering whether you thought uh, maybe a cheeky subdue the spirits might be nice in here. That's the phoenix one that gives you uh, skill equal to your glory. Yeah, do you have to? You have to be more honourable than your opponent, don't you? The spirit. Is that? Uh, you do have to be more honourable, yeah. But you know, yeah. this is lying. I'm just gonna have to yeah, find that card. Like it's really conflict. Two fate add everyone's glory to their skill totals. That's glory Not to awful. each of its skills. Yeah, yeah. but it's like, mm, it's a two cost event, isn't it? That. That's it. Like when it. <sighs> When it feels like a spot to do that kind of thing, I feel as though I just would have been better off playing something to to win another military conflict. I don't know. It's <laughs> it's it just mm. because it. Yeah. I just kind of ignore I, I feel ignore like... it, and it, I find it better to ignore the political entirely. Maybe a political poke every once in a while with a keeper initiate or something like that. But other than that, yeah. I don't. Yeah. I just haven't found myself touching a political side of a game. <laughs> No, fair <laughs> fair so is the was the vague game plan to let your stuff break and display your power so just super super capital yes because if they run offenses? into appealing of fortunes or the art of war first turn break it yep. and i display the ring it is such a huge like tempo swing towards me yeah. Like especially like I lot like the first game I played against Brona was like the 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 last game of the um like the first four games like the, I don't know what you call that stage. Yep. Um, the Swiss. Uh, yeah, the, the Swiss. Swiss yep. Yeah. Uh, I th- I'm fairly sure they ran at me straight into appealing to the fortunes that had a Taturi on it. So he just popped out. Uh, like ran at a I won by. Uh, like five or more. I like. I think I just. Dis- oh, what did I do? It broke. He came out. Maybe I displayed a firing, so it instantly then honoured him, and then he just walked over provinces. Like two on the first turn, then two yeah. on the second. Like, uh... yeah. Um. Yeah. Because then I played a spirit call a second turn. Spirit called him back out again next turn, and just ran over it again. And it's crazy how quickly a Taturi can end the game. If you have way of the lines in hand, yeah, he's definitely on or off, isn't he? He's either he's either doing nothing at all, or he's controlling the whole game. It's oh, I find him way more often than not. Like in the first turn or two, uh, they a lot of people just can't handle how much high high his stats can get. Yeah, well, I mean, if you get him on, and obviously you've got all the tricks there to get him on, and mm. like a, a charge to Turi for one fight for a. Yeah, you know, if you get him honored, that's what nine for one fate. Yeah, two cards you functionally got on the table, and he's double resolving rings. Yeah, that's that's not awful. And that's then that the like another play that was used a lot is Goblin Sneak or Reservist with a Legion of One on them. 
Like it just yeah. it's so so strong when that when you can just go up to like seven in Goblin Sneak or nine sometimes for reservist with two cards yeah. for one mm, fate Legion from hand. Is, it's a bit crazy. Yeah, Legion One is beastly. I've had in my Scorpion deck I've had um Yogo Hiroe who has zero military strength. He's soloed someone's province there stronghold at the end of a game just because of Legion or one so he's just waddled in and dropped the fate gone to six taken it himself it's just such an enormous swing yeah. for one card yeah. um, and people often just sort of go oh shit eh? I couldn't handle that because they under defend because there's so little there yeah yeah, yeah. No. but no I, rem- I remember quite a big board swell as well when I was when you and I were playing against each other um, I know we went back and forth a fair bit yeah. early and then you pulled way away on me, I think, on turn three. Yeah. Like, I think I had one, one or two guys on the table, and I think you had, what, six? Yeah. So suddenly I feel it. as though that was one of those display of power, the void ring. Um, yeah. You were you were using your um, Oni mask, so you were ripping some fate off yourself, and then yeah. combining it with, like, a void ring turned on you, I think wiped your board, and then I played, like, two Gunzos and... Uh, Matsy Berserker or something like that the next turn was my flip it was just a whole bunch of cheap stuff in it yeah no it was but they were I don't know cheap stuff is fine but when you yeah. get hands full of bonsais and legion of ones and the like yeah I think I got you know, them both really out and then pulled out an honor general and you were like forced to yep. blank the honor general because it was just yeah. too much force <laughs> yeah too many yeah. bodies no it was a super good game but um yeah straight over me with the the extra because certainly I think once they got I felt like they were fine, and then suddenly they just weren't anymore, and they were just everywhere, and there were too many conflicts going on, and there were no fate on rings for me to go back and get, because mm. there was extra conflicts every turn, and it just sort of spiraled. Yeah, no, that, um, that was the first round of our game, I think every single, or the, maybe the first or second round, every ring was gone, and so yep. when you start starving the other person of fate, a lot of people have more expensive conflict side decks than this deck has. Yeah. And if I have, I mean, you're not, if I have a little bit of fate, yeah. I just like I can goblin sneak off one or two fates that they have left, and it, yeah, you know, that's it, becomes goblin real sneaks. strong when they're accommodating playing stuff from hand, and yep. you can take it before they have a chance. No, absolutely, because mm. um, I noticed you're running ancestral lands as a province there as well. There was a lot of that going on at the EC. I noticed a lot of people, myself included, went back to the old entrenched position or in- ancestral lands. Yeah. Um, on their boxes just I think I feel like there was a lot of specialists like our Phoenix player um, Merlin at the time actually switched and went to Phoenix Dishonor for the day out of old box oh yeah yeah, yeah actually, I went Clint and I were talking about that leading up to the event yeah I um, I spent the first turn and a half because we don't we played a couple of games the day before or the day before yeah. um, and so I spent the first turn and a half against Clinton just assuming it was Kudnisawa and so I'm playing stuff like, um, like playing to that box. Like I'm playing my. Yeah. Um, you, you didn't even look at his box. I, I didn't. <laughs> like I, I, I looked at it and I saw Kudnasawa, but that's not what it was. <laughs> like, you hallucinated. I, like I saw, I saw orange. I saw a castle-y looking house thing, and I thought, all right. Yeah, that seems shit. about right. And then suddenly all this stuff started happening, and I was like, oh, hang on, what's going on? And I honestly, against Clinton, I spent. I felt really bad actually, but I spent two full turns on one honor and <laughs> had, and I just completely lucked out like that he didn't draw his backhanded compliments. Well, all, that's all it would have taken. Did he I, have I just backhanded two and he didn't draw them? Yeah, yeah. No, he had three. Oh, three. Wow. Yeah, th- three of them. Like he just Jeez. didn't draw them. Like it was complete ass. Yeah. Like, because oh, I, I honestly sat there for two full turns going, all right, he just drew a card. Now I'm But you would have both been bidding one though. Yeah, so it's like... Mm. Well, once I was yeah. there, but I also, I, I gained, once I was there and I got, okay, he hasn't got the, the he hasn't got his backhanders yet. I was like, all right, no worries. So then it was all sort of um, blackmail artists and loyal challengers and they just clawed me back up to three or four and then he'd hammer yeah. me back down to one for the next turn and then I clawed Mate, loyal challenge back. is risky though. Well, kind of, because you can just duel against someone you're going to lose to and it just blanks itself. Ah, uh, so you've got right, to, yep. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's not as risky, and and Blanks Scorpion it. have got a yeah, spanks it itself. So it's just like the unicorn one, right? Where like you can harpoon your opponent, yeah. But if you lose, you can harpoon your own thing. Like it kind of works both ways. Yeah. So, so some yeah. people some people deliberately lose that so that um, their opponent harpoons in one of their guys. Yeah, 
that's it. So like, if they've only got one big dude there, you just yep. drag him across. Yeah, it's super. But uh, it was a really good game. I felt super bad though. He he should have won by all rights, but it was just yeah. the card said no. What but, um, what was the game you lost in Swiss? I was wondering that, like when I was looking at the results. I who did I lose to? I I beat Edwin's Dishonor Scorpion. Um, yeah, I was, I, he, just... I was surprised he like he came fifth and didn't make cut. I was like, he's yeah. won the last couple of events, and I was no, really has, worried about that but... deck. Yeah, me too. And he he did very well, but I think I um for me at least I didn't bid very high most of that game. Yeah, um I was like I think the highest I bid was like I think five turn one, and after that was yeah. threes and and below. And I have a feeling that's probably what happened most of the time because the dishonor mm. deck has sort of caught people and they're like oh okay yeah that was a thing and it ran over and now they're like all right now i know yeah. they know what he's playing yeah he's right? very very that. willing to drop his own honor very very low and like that's because yeah. i i i beat him in swiss as well with him dropping mm. low and then me getting an air ring off with the Turi, and it was just yeah and it's I was... it can knock you down so so quickly and he does yeah he really dra- but i was very surprised not mm. to see edwin in the top four to be honest but um yeah I think it was just probably just you know the cards say no. Yeah. He had a bit of a bad well, him day. and Aaron both yeah, consistent Aaron performers sure, yeah. went in top yeah, four this time. Yeah, very good. But um, and I just jagged it basically and just yeah. just fluked it. But um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so I'm trying to think who I lo- oh I lost against Andrew Eden's crab. Oh yeah, yeah. That was super strong. I just couldn't. I didn't knock him down fast enough basically i couldn't couldn't get him down there and then you know by turn three the crab were doing crab things and um yeah he knocked me off at that point so that was um yep. a big break actually he ended up we didn't we barely broke provinces i think he ended up dishonoring me out yeah um i think because watch commanders were a thing and my deck is very much didn't find calling a favors uh i did so i took one of them and he blew it up and then he played another one yeah, yeah. And I was just that was that was getting a bit old. And when we were playing the dishonor game, though, like calling in favors, is also costing me honor along with other stuff. Like it's a very yeah yeah yeah. My 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 breed of scorpions pretty reckless. It's, yeah, no, it sure is. It's, <laughs> it sure is. It's very, yeah, it's just it's all in. But I was playing all kinds of cracked out cards. Yeah. Like uh, what, I played. Oh yeah, um, you played. What did you do? You played the ridiculous card against me. The the new one. The uh, false loyalties. Uh, yeah. False loyalties that did okay. It switched. What is it? Bowed Ujiaki, so you had to blow him up instead of having him actually run at me in a conflict, which means you couldn't blow the favor up to him that turn. I mean, don't get me wrong, I lost. Yeah, but <laughs> I think I th- it still it, it saved me for that conflict. I was thinking in the end that I didn't mind that happening. I was like, okay, hmm. you had a really strong board state. Yeah, no, so. my board state was so strong that I'm like, okay, then I yeah. don't mind. <laughs> Yeah, you're in a good place when you can just go, oh, well, my five cost has exploded. Who cares? Yeah. That's, I was probably already lost at that point. But no, look, I, it was a one one of, I threw in there, I thought it's just going to be a bit of a trick that I can, yeah. I can no, do. No, it could catch um, someone out for sure, not knowing that's yeah, a thing. I think, reconsidering, I would probably swap it out for a, another Kiriko, to be honest. Such a good um, card. Yeah, Kiriko is yeah, just that card's bonkers. Completely super bonkers. Good. Yeah, I just I, think so much that I have ready for battle in, in Lion, yeah. and... Oh, I feel you. That card is <laughs> such an MVP card. Like a lot of clans, like if if you if it's not Crane, most clans have like one source of bow, maybe two, and yeah. so those ready for battles, you know exactly what you're waiting on them for. And as soon as they play like Kireko, like Scorpion, do they have another bow effect? Like if they're not running Water uh... Ring, do they have another bow effect that's played? It's just I don't. Not that I can oh, think. For, for shame, you'll see a lot. Yeah. And, and often you just... And that's the thing with for shame. You can just pick bad yeah. and then not. Um, but I find... Because I, I run ready for battle out of my scorpion. Mm. And um, I find just being able to... When you're agonizing over what rings to take, just to be able to ignore water. Yeah. And go, that's fine. They can attack me back on it. And you have that foreknowledge that the water yeah. ring is not going to work. It's not going to do anything. If they bow yeah. your guy. You can have your five coster sitting off to the side with no fate on him for this turn. Yeah. And he's good, you know. It's really, yeah. it's a really good vibe. But it's yeah, a, it's along a super good card. those lines with the line deck I was playing too. If I'm first player, the other the person can't 
run a watering at me set as their first conflict. Because if that gets displayed, I stand back up like the big guy who just ran at them in the first conflict. It yeah. it the ring options when you're playing against display of power are, are so so limiting. Like it's it's I'm sure it's frustrating. Yeah. Well, you know the very typical the very typical line of play is to just attack Earth. The trouble with attacking Earth against you is it's your keeper. Fucking mm -hmm. Yeah, if I you man. display Earth Ring, yeah. I'm I'm more than content. More than yeah. content, especially yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. do you do do you play only cheap guys most of the time? You try to keep a big fate pool. Oh, uh, everything if you draw into them. Yeah, generally you don't know if this play's coming early on when you got to buy your guys. Generally, right? it's two options. It's either play just one and two cost stuff, or if I'm first player, I'll play Alliance Pro Brawler. Uh, like turn two or three, Spirit Caller becomes an option. Um, any of those five costers um, are generally charge targets. Um, unless it's Ujiaki and the other person has cancels and I'd rather be safe. Like, to make sure they make it into play. Like, I don't want to have the favor and try to charge Ujiaki and get it cancelled and miss a whole round that I could have used his ability for. Um, so, I'd play him if I have the favor. Other than that, I don't really think I would um, buy a 5 coster. Yeah, yeah. I think unless you were like really late game and you were yeah. just hoarding fate, if, right? if you're rolling, like, yeah, yeah. If there was literally nothing else to spend it on. Yeah. I mean, your your fate deck has like 10 one costs and 8 two cost cards in it. Yeah. So you don't need the fate at all mm -hmm. until turn 4. Yeah. And the yeah, pressure, and, the and pressure you, in the first two yeah, turns is with charges, uh, hopefully, and appealing yeah. to the fortunes to cheat stuff into play is how you get pressure, and you should have stockpiled fate um, going into turn three if it gets there, which it usually does end on the first or second conflict of turn three if I'm if I'm going right. Um, so, so what are you changing in this deck with pack two then? Uh, pack 2 will just be 1 display of power out, 3 earth becomes sky, and probably for a 1 of the legion of 1s, and hmm, maybe a hand to hand? hand, yeah, maybe a hand to hand. I do like hand to hand just to knock, like, uh, honestly I've used it more to knock, um, uh, uh, what's the clouds and stuff? cloud off my own characters? Yeah, because yeah. when someone clouds like a spirit collar or something, it just feel bad. So you kind of want them. Yeah. Um, I think with hand to hand, like I think yeah, you're right. You want to put the Earth become sky in, and I think hand to hand is a card that you don't necessarily need to see turn one. Yeah. So I think if you can wait one turn, two turns to see. Hand to hand, uh, two is probably enough in the deck. Yeah, like sometimes I'll notice them very much sitting dead for a while. Like in certain matchups, yeah. they'll sit there in your hand, just just collecting dust because no one's playing any attachments. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of cards in here as well that um, your opponent really wants to cancel. The thing about cancel is, of course, that there's only so much canceling you can do. You yeah, know, like you want to cancel. <clears throat> excuse me, you want to cancel the way of the lion, the charge, strength in numbers, display of power. Yeah, that's a lot. It's a real stuff. yeah. Playing display of power. Um, the amount of times that can allow you to get a free charge off in the next conflict also works. Like because they, you can't really let a, a display of power go through first round if they have cancels like ready to go. They'll almost always play it on that first round display of power. Because yeah. if they let that go through, I get A, the ring effect that's happening, and I'm 90% of the time I'll get the favor that round. Because you can't you can't compete once I have your ring. I will almost always win a military ring. And if I bought like a carbide guard, they'll just sit at home and be too glory. So it's just, if the display goes through, I then have cancels next round, and we'll just cancel your cancels. So it doesn't matter that you have them anymore. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, like having the favor is super important. Yeah. 
Mm. I think I got it probably five out of six games in the first round. The it's one, sweet. the one time I didn't get it was the crab matchup, which broke two of my province's first turn, and I was in a fair amount of trouble when I had to spend the second round defending, and then went aggressive third round. But that 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 was probably the closest they got to losing was against crab, but that was me display a pairing a void ring again, uh, and that just knocked off their board, like it voided off a Kasada, the fate, last fate on a Kasada. I managed to sneak by to destroy an Iron Mine they also had, um, sending here, like sending in Kasada home and stuff. And so he went from a fated Kasada with a backup, uh, backed up Iron Mine to nothing in, mm. in a turn, which the swing plays are so, so strong. Yeah. I actually think in this regard, you know, what I think Purity Spirit over the perfect cut is actually the right call because you've got uh, all of that glory that is just going on to your charge targets and things like that. Yeah. yeah. The, there's something to be said for front-loading front loading honored tokens. Uh, sorry, getting cards that put you honored straight away as opposed to cards that say get honored after you win the conflict or something like that. Yeah, because yeah. it would, like, that's the... <laughs> The reason against perfect cut is you want the you want the reward right now. Like they can be honored, great. Sure. But I'm probably sure. gonna sack them to like the stronghold and stuff like that by the time it's useful. Yeah. Hmm. Alright, um do you did you have like a particular like was there a very memorable play or a very memorable game from the weekend? A memorable play from the weekend. Mm. Oh hmm. I'd have to think about that one, honestly. Um, I mean, like winning against Edwin's Dishonor Scorpion on turn two was probably a highlight. Like I just, I, I was like, okay, cool. I won first round. Uh, that was against who did I play first round? Um, I played Julian first round. His crane. That went all right. Like that was one of those games where I just broke a couple first turn, and it just went from there. But the second round, as soon as I come across the son of Scorpion, I, I just like I just start getting worried. I don't like I don't know why. I just feel as though so I play. Draw, you want to draw lots of cards, right? Yeah. I feel as though I play really bad like... into it, and I always do. Yeah. And so susceptible to the Sonna, but like Purity of Spirit is such an amazing card in that matchup. So so good. Um, mm. okay. and then uh. I think, because they also run Display of Power, and so I'm like, how do I get rings? How do I get the favor? They're just going to cancel all my stuff. Uh, the, I feel like that. I feel like that it, it, with Scorpion, just in general, right? They're just like, yeah. I just feel like they've got all the tricks. Yeah, I and just I don't know. It's, there's there's it's, always something that I've forgotten, yeah. no matter how hard I try. Yeah, it's always a feels bad game, and it just seem like they just didn't draw the tricks like I don't think they drew a forged edict and they didn't draw duty and like they dishonored out really really quickly and I was still on like 11 honor to end the game or something like that and it's it just went by like I was very comfortable after the first round and just big red numbers the kind of way yeah, smash face attack red attack yeah. mountain ring yeah don't touch political. Don't let them play court games on my stuff. It, it's mm. good stuff. <laughs> Just all in on the so, military. I like it. Hey, that's actually an interesting point. I never really thought about it that way. Like, if you're never attacking, if you're never attacking political, you never really have to worry about court games. Yeah. Oh, it's it's only annoying when uh, like Crane can continuously play court games on any character they attack in political, and it makes it very easy for them to enable your cancels when you can't court games them back. Yeah. Um. Or like any high glory characters, like if Phoenix are doing it, um, like I think this deck, honestly, I think struggles against Phoenix. I just didn't play well on the weekend, thankfully. Um, I haven't tried it, like continuously played it enough to test against that. But um, well, look, winning any event is equal parts skill and luck, right? Yeah. You can't you can't win an event if you aren't at least a little bit lucky. So yeah, yeah. Because I think it was. Two, what did I play? I played against Crane three times. I played against uh, 
what else did I play against? Scorpion twice Scorpion and twice. a crab. That was it. It was like th I only played against three clans, even though every clan <laughs> was represented there. How many players did you say you got? Eleven. Uh, it, cool. Eleven. We ended up with. Yeah, yeah. So, and that was. So. Yeah. Go, go on. Uh, that was. There was like there wasn't three of any clan either. I think it was four clans had two of's and the three clans had one of's. So it was a it was a dispersed field for eleven players, which is kind of rare for us. Sometimes you get a triple up of like like crab sometimes or crane sometimes. Sc scorpion, yeah, had... yep, scorpion, scorpion. There's a fair amount of scorpions kicking around. Yeah, and then but, um, I often find that if I if we rock up to like an eight person event or whatever, and there's three of one clan, yeah. I, I tend to suddenly panic and just like put a deck together for something that's not represented. Yeah. Like it's often my, it's not uncommon. Actually, it's probably more the rule than not that I'm sitting there building my deck five minutes into the rounds already starting. Yeah. That's happened before. <laughs> it's all the time. That's... I just, I really like the, the varied field and I really dislike mirrors of any kind. But, um, yeah. I just find them, I don't know. I don't know why. I, I mean, they're a very different play experience, most mirrors, but, um, yeah. Hey, quick question, Jack, about your deck. Probably oh. the last one I'm going to bombard you with. Yeah, another Did one. you get, um, did um, Fallen in Battle come off at all? Fallen in Battle did not get used. I don't Aww. think that... Oh. Disappointing. Yeah, it was disappointing, but I didn't really... I honestly think I barely saw it. And like, as I said, in, in the matchup where we played each other, if I couldn't get up over the like 11 or 12 strength um, entrenched position... I was going to be at least five up, and I was going to fall in battle the shoju you had. Yeah, so it's like, I had the backup plan. Like, if this doesn't break, I know I can win by five, and that, and then mm. he's dead. I have a board for next round. You have nothing, and I should just yeah. win next round. Yeah, um, fair enough. But, I suppose with HMT for Lion, mm. that you've got to be five up anyway to trigger your box, so you sort of got that extra incentive to go down yeah. to five. Well, I mean, over. you like you always pretty much have to be four up to break. You have to be five up for box, and so when you're boosting a whole lot, you're disguising the fact that you're looking for a fallen in the battle. They're like, oh, you activate your yeah. stronghold. I don't really want you to do that, but I don't care that much because you can't follow it up with too much, and you're like, ah, I was actually doing it for fallen in the battle the whole time. Yeah, like and it. Um, that's just, like, that's the 41st card in the deck, that's why it's 41 cards, because I decided that I wanted to play Fallen in Battle. Nah, fair cool. Um, yeah. it's worked at home, like but never at, not at the tournament yet. Yeah, you gotta get the numbers in. Yeah. Very good. So, so um, um, when... Yeah, go ahead, Merlin. When you guys were, uh, doing the EC on the weekend, there was also an EC up in Sydney, in Top Ride, mm -hmm. uh, and they had, they had 10 players as well. Um, and I... I put out a post on Facebook, you know, wishing everybody good luck and that kind of thing. And I had a look on Lotus Pavilion for the tournaments, like the the tournament pairings and stuff, but I couldn't find yours. Did you guys use Lotus Pavilion? No. no. They use... Uh, good Games over here use the one that is recommended by Good Games. I can't remember what... It, uh, recommended by uh, FFG, sorry. I don't remember what it's called. The default one. Is it, is it Tome? That's the FFG one? Yeah, I think it's mm -hmm. Tome that they use, right? Uh, I think so, yeah. It's, there's no real stats and it's not very good. Yeah, we never get full result. Like, we just get a results page of, like, <laughs> wins and losses and you don't really see who played who or stats or anything, really. It's a, it's yeah. actually kind of annoying, but... So, Tome is unfortunately really bad. Yeah, I imagine it's... Right? I, I imagine it might be good for other games. My big gripe with it is that you can't... Like, if you're running an event, nobody else can actually kind of see the events that are going on and get in there and have a, have a look, but, yeah. Yeah. Like, all we get is that what... Uh, I just posted there. It's like, it's all you get is, uh, like, the letter at the end. You get you get strength of schedule. You get how many points people are on and stuff, but you don't... You can't look at matchups. You can't see who... What player... Like, what even someone played. What clan they played. Like, it doesn't... It's yeah. just pretty pretty lackluster compared to Lotus Pavilion. Yeah. Well, I think F FFG are trialing a new product, right, for... Is it Keyforge they're trialing it on? Something they're building? There's some yeah. Kind of are they? I don't know. Out. Yeah, there, there's some replacement they're, they're bouncing around at the moment um, for specific places, as I understand. I don't know much at all about it. It came out... Yeah. It was a few months ago now, I think. It was not, not super yeah. recent, but... um. 
hopefully it's Keyforge, good. Keyforged is a little bit different because uh, Keyforged built into the Keyforged game is this idea of chains, right? And one of the things that FFG can do with their apps, because when you go to a tournament, you have to kind of say, this is the deck that I'm playing. Yeah. And they have they have all this data around it. Yep. And they, they load it into the app and things like that. Oh, wow. And okay. so yeah. when, the, when certain decks or certain mechanics become really powerful, they can adjust that by applying this thing called, these things called chains to kind of uh, try and keep the decks in line. Yeah. Because um, in that game, obviously, with them all being pre-made decks, you can have the case where one deck is just purely and subjectively better than every other deck. And yeah. so they have and chains, then... which are to do with draw... Like, they, they limit card draw in the first couple turns of the game, depending on how yeah. many chains you have. And I quite like that idea. Hopefully that, like, limit a can... deck. Yeah, I like the idea that the game's got built-in balancing mechanics like that. But yeah. It's so a, that's I in, find that's it strange to apply it to a game that doesn't really have deck building at all. Like, so it's just this mm. random deck that you've got. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's a really awesome competitive idea for almost what appears to be a completely non-competitive. It oh, it's still non-competitive. Deck structure. It. I yeah. don't. I don't think it is competitive. It, like when it, when it's pay for the best deck you can find. It's not. I don't. I don't yeah, think you can have much a bit... of a competitive scene. Like they, I'm sure they no can. Decks... I reckon. I reckon no there's a the bell curve right? distribution of decks, and I think that the the players, um, the player skill kind of comes into play when the decks are not balanced, right? I actually reckon that most decks kind of fall into this acceptable range of, you know, they're all basically as powerful as each other. Yeah. And then there's a very small number of decks that are absolute garbage, and an equally equally small yeah. number of decks that is super good. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you have your 99th percentile decks. Yeah, so so I've not played Keyforge at all, but like, are there like just dumpster fire decks that are just practically not usable? Uh, no, I think know. they have their. There's like the uh, the um. Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? There's like a like a uh, it's some kind of program or something like that that makes sure like a deck will never be broken bad. Like there's always at least, I don't remember, some amount of synergy in every deck, no matter what. It's just that some okay. decks have can have an outrageously good amount of synergy. And that's all that all that all that game is, is you want synergy between your your deck. Because it's ran it's your deck's basically random. Yeah, okay. Hmm. I might anyway. But yeah, that's enough about anyway. Key Forge, right? <laughs> <laughs> what game? What game was that? Yeah. I didn't know any game called Keyforge. Keyforge uh, or something like that. Um, so let's. So since we since we've been talking about like Lion and the deck for so long, how do you think Lion are going to do at Gen Con, which is the next big tournament coming up? Sorry. Uh, give, give, what, how do you Gen think Lion are going to do at Gen Con, given? What you've just kind of played and how you feel like um, the new cycle is helping line out, all that stuff. Uh, they should do, like, realistically, I'd, I'd say like they should do better than they have been. But I mean, there was a, there's been a couple very good like line performances as of late in tournaments anyway. Like a couple of them being like Scorpion Splash with support of the Scorpion. I think was the like I got a top four in Birmingham. I think, but um. Uh, yeah, it it yeah, de yeah. it depends on the caliber. Like it also depends on the caliber of players and who like decides to play lion. Because I know for a fact mm -hmm. that some of the best lion players weren't playing lion because they were so uncompetitive. Like yeah. you can you can only uh, like a great player can only do so much. But with uh, the only clan to have an earth be able to play earth becomes sky. Together with like the display of power, like purity, phoenix, splash, it's already working. It yeah. should be good. You should see more lions towards like the actual like top cut this time. There's been multiple like Kotai's without a lion in the top cut. Like when you when your Hadamodo isn't playing top cut, it's not it's not very like good, is it? But <laughs> I think. I really think that they there'll be a couple up there. Like I don't know who's going to Gen Con. 
of like the lion players that I know, but I'm sure there'll definitely be some good performances. Yeah. Yeah, pick a variation of this deck of yours uh, is definitely solid. Um, yeah. Because... I, I, I just look at I just look at this deck list, and I feel very comfortable that there's a plan, you know, and it's uh, it's got a very clear way that it's going to execute on that plan. Yeah. Um, because it's very good, and I think Pack Two with Earth Becomes Sky is going to make it yeah. really challenging for some people. There's also the fact that decks. They're the only ones with that option. Yeah, too, only one with Earth Rock. Yeah. And that's been a huge contention in the Lion uh, chat on Discord about whether they're going to get Seeker of Earth or Keeper of Air as the next role. Ooh. And about everyone just keeps... Oh, man. That chat, like, until, yeah. until they decided to tell people they had to stop arguing about it, would not stop arguing about what role they wanted to pick <laughs> next. It was just... It was a bit of a... Yeah. Not great. Yeah. But they, it's, yeah, it's been alright lately. I think slowly people have realised how good Earth is and that like obviously the the real pick would be to keep keeper of earth but of course you can't keep your role no, so seeker okay. of earth very very quickly though mm. did <laughs> did support of the phoenix at any point cross your mind <laughs> like did you even consider uh, that that card not was really option? because nah. it like the deck wants to slot straight in earth becomes sky and you can't play it with that yeah, okay. as well as keeper initiates with the keeper of earth are genuinely good i feel like that's the correct keeper issue is the only keeper cards that I can see in your deck. Uh, that wouldn't surprise me. Uh, sabotage is a good card. That's an earth card. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's not, I know, uh, but like I'm, I'm yeah. just looking at role based cards. Um, yeah. one time sabotage is always good. I've used that so much, honestly. Almost every game I'll use that card. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm wondering whether I should play uh, Boston Academy out of Phoenix. For mm. kind of the same reason. When yeah. it turns up, it's almost always there's almost something, almost always something to do with it. Yeah. I reckon rebuild Phoenix is is potentially a thing to be honest with Satoshi, and because Phoenix have just got so much utility in their holdings, but and it, they've got mm, the district. There were some new there were some new cards that uh, I thought about putting together a crab splash deck. Um, so the one Fury of the Damned, I, well, you can't play it at the moment because of the Fury roll. of the Damned. No. Yeah, the uh, the fire roll card. Yeah, it like doubles everybody's... Well, doubles... A Double bunch the of base military, military skill right? yeah. of a bunch of, of characters. Everyone defending? Yeah. everyone defending, I think, and then they die. And then they die, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then during during conflict, choose corpses. any number of participating Bushi characters you control. Double the base military skill of each of those characters until the end of the conflict. And then they all mm. die. I thought there was I thought there was another one in, uh, in pack one as well that I was thinking about. Nothing comes to mind. A right. crab I mean, event. That's that's kind yeah, of the theme. So. They've got a lot of defend to get big, and blow yourself up kind of cards all over the place. So, wouldn't surprise me. Mm. Um, there's an event at Gen Con which is like uh, Elements Unbound, where you get to choose any role. I think it is. And I'm going to, I'm seriously thinking about an earth roll, but I think everybody's going to do an earth roll. So I, I feel like I want to do something a little bit different. I'm not really going to win that particular event, right? So I might put together some sort of fire-based deck or something like that. Yeah. We've done water, we've done void, we've done air. Earth and uh, fire are kind of the ones that yeah. haven't been tested out. And they've always liked fire. the idea They've been given so many times. fire cards now. Like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like and there's Phoenix to the librarian. And stuff yeah, like the that. librarian with lots of honor effects and like purity of spirit and everything. Mm. And like there's the one that says the person can't be can't become dishonored. Oh yeah, that's the fire card, isn't it? The yeah. unequal skill or something like that. Mm. Yeah. Something like something like that. There's a zero cost plus one plus one can't be dishonored, and then if you're ever less honorable than your opponent, it blows up. Something to no, if you ever lose, if you ever lose, if this character ever loses a conflict, I think it is. Oh, loses the conflict, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. No, I really <laughs> rate that card. It just annoys me that, like, you don't get to see it because it's roll locked. And even when it's roll locked, it's kind of niche. It doesn't go everywhere. Yeah, so frustrating. Honestly. I wonder, I wonder if it goes in sort of the Bushi deck. Um, 
I say the Bushi deck. I'm still not convinced that that deck is really all together yet. I don't know what it's waiting for, but uh, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel great at the moment playing. Uh, yeah, Bushi no, deck. I'm inclined to agree. I think most of most of the subset or the secondary theme decks for every clan um, just don't have the number of people with the keywords to support the deck. Like, the, like every clan sort of like Phoenix have got Shug, Scorpion have got Courtiers, Lion have got Bougie. I don't know if it's the lack of keywords though. You can't but sort of the, double down on those cards that are going to trigger. Well, I just don't feel like the Bushi deck really has. Uh, it doesn't seem like it has a strategy, right? It, you know, that's that's the wrong that's the wrong word, right? The strategy is clearly to go and break your opponent's stronghold. But all of the cards that you have that are uh, the Shigenja cards, they uh, they work really well with all of the Shigenja. Things synergize really uh, easily, right? Whereas with the Bushi, it feels feels really clunky. It feels like you're running up like a thousand steps, you know? Um, yeah. Your guy, your guy, you can't straighten your guys, right? Like, yeah, if you if you put people into conflicts, you kind of really got to commit to this conflict and then be okay with your opponent uh, counterattacking because you can't really straighten your guys. Um, it feels like it's off balance because if you go into a conflict and they defend a little bit more heavily than you thought they were going to, it kind of puts you off balance. Um, it makes it it makes it feel like you have to really, really, really win that conflict. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. No. Fair enough. But I mean, I feel that. they can still play Clarity of Purpose, though, right? Yeah, they That's can. Such yeah. a strong card. That like, I'm so so surprised yeah. more people don't splash that card. Oh, it's just it's three influence, right? Is it three influence? It is, yeah, right. Yeah, it's just so expensive. <laughs> oh, it's so like, good though. It really mm. is. Don't get me wrong. It's one of the re like it's one of the reasons that Phoenix like the the Shigenja Phoenix like cuteness hour never like, goes away. Like that card is oh, that so against the waves together. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just you can ridiculous. you never stop. No, and. Like, it's completely mm -hmm. unnecessary that it stops you from bowing in the combat as well. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> that, yeah. That card would it be fine to just not If it just says doesn't bow... Yeah, but then, then it'd be... Yeah, because then it's it, it's still better than Mountain Does Not Fall. <laughs> well, yeah. Ma Mountain Does Not Fall can give you... Can basically keep a guy around for three conflicts in a turn. Yeah, I guess that's the thing, isn't it? It's the whole round. Yeah. Man, I played this game for so long before I realised that it did that. Like, I was so stupid back in the day. <laughs> um, I, I can imagine there must be instances out there, though, where, like, Crab are playing against HMT and they're getting, like, four conflicts a turn out of a Casada or something ludicrous. Yep. Because of all that stuff coming Yeah, it's just defend, defend. Yep. Um, no, I like it. But the deck that... Well, the deck that is coming right is going to be the Phoenix, uh, like, Charge Bird with... Um, the air roll, yeah, the air roll card, Mate, right? Don't, don't get me started the, on that. The charge deck, roll with four bearers echoes? Like, is that going to be, like, huge or uh, not? Like, that has yeah, to be, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's going to break the game. All right, no, that's that's too that's far. That's a bit much, yeah. But it's going to be, it's going to be fucking good. Really? Like, it's going to may, may feel I give you, really I'll give good you a, to play that. I'll give you a singular guess at which conflict personality is going to start popping up again, just like she did last time. Oh, oh. Kikiyo will be yeah. out in drugs. I don't, I don't give two shits about Kikiyo, <laughs> But it's still, yeah. I mean, every like, other clan There are so happy. many spells. The, the deck runs like 23, 24 spells. And there are so many spells to cancel. Sure, cancel one, right? I'll recur it. It's fine. You know? I don't, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not at all upset and about Kikiyo these days. Every other clan doesn't care that you're playing Kikiyo because now you have a, like a dead card in most matchups. <laughs> Yeah. She can still yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, play she's that. Play that. What three cost two two? Go for it. <laughs> yeah, and she's she lets me cloud. She does it. <laughs> look, there's 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 plenty of good reasons for for Scorpion to play Kikuyo. I don't think I'll see it splashed into anything. Um, yeah. But like against against Scorpion, Phoenix don't feel as as bad as they used to for sure. Yeah. And that that line splash. That line deck is going to like the Phoenix Splash line. Deck. Yeah, Phoenix Splash line. Um, yeah. I, I played it a, a little bit locally, and yep. I am really hanging for Jagoku to get updated. Yeah, so no, I, I really want that too. Uh, but um, the second deck I ever played was Phoenix Splash line, but this was like 
probably like started this year maybe just playing like charge bird just because like yeah. just because i could with like my because you know, my ancestor strength is fun you know when you set like a, a ethereal dreamer to a six six it's just it's good yeah you know it took um bill curlis army's uh keeper of water phoenix lion deck to worlds last year oh yeah and it it did really well you know like i i probably let the deck down more than the deck let me down but it was so good to play um there's there's something about lion slash and uh charge and fushicho it just it just it's just really nice oh there's plenty there like phoenix have got plenty well they, not plenty they've got enough honor effects as well and like there's a quite a few little lion cards that synergize quite nicely there like it's just mm -hmm. it's a very good fit i think I think I mentioned on, on the last podcast, but this this notion of buying your guys, like cheating at your guys with Charge and Fushicho and abandoning and appealing to the fortunes and things like that, um, it actually counters a lot of other plays, right? Like if your opponent clouds one of your guys, you don't care because he's going to go in a minute anyway because, because you just kind of cheated him out. And then you cheat him back into play with the similar sort of mechanics that you used to get in there in the first place. So it's it it makes uh, yeah it makes decks where so I don't mind I don't mind the mirror matchup in Phoenix the mirror matchup if the opponent's playing Qnisar with consumed by five fires and things like that don't really mind it at all why my guys don't really have fate on them anyway yeah um, things so, things so yeah, like that the lion. is there space for maybe I suppose you need to do it with the KI and the Lion deck, don't you? With the the spell that does the things, because Lion will have two spells now that synergize there, don't they? They've got the yeah. new one that brings them out, and then the one that matches the stats. Yeah, it's pretty pretty good because they synergize so well. I suppose means they're not running to darker with the restricted list. So. You need yeah, to, but a lot of people so are playing so are going to be playing conflict to darker now, so it's not that big a loss. Yeah, which don't get me wrong is is a better feeling. It's still terrifying. Yeah. I mean, I want to play. I don't know about, I don't know about terrifying. He's bloody good. Bloody, yeah, bloody good. but see, I want to try. I now that when that comes out, well, whenever we get the cards over here, I really want to try out like Crab Splash Phoenix for like against the waves and him. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think that acts like the blood. What is it called? Blood and bonds of blood. Or bonds something? of is blood. That? Yeah. Yeah, I think um, when you have because this is like the roll restricted pack. Right? Yeah. Like. A pack like this with so many locked cards, I think you won't even see most of the potential for quite some time, because the rolls are going to have to cycle out, yeah. and suddenly different yep. clans are going to have access to different ones, and like, you don't know what Phoenix are going to be able to do with an Earth Roll to run that card themselves, you know, like, they can't cycle it, but it's still super potent in yeah. so many places. Or what so many clans could do with, um, like, the Crane, a new name? The Void Roll, which gives them Bushi and Courtier traits to a character. Yeah. Like, mean, that said, I, that there's a lot of Void out there. a lot of things. We got, there's four clans of Seeker or Void at the moment, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, so, thankfully, like, but... Mm. Yeah, super good. And Seeker or Void is already super good for Phoenix. Yeah. But, um, no, I like... I'm, I'm very enthusiastic about all the options that are opening up in the game. Just the bigger the card pool gets. I notice people reaching back and taking older cards and they're sort of starting to become playable like that stuff is starting to yeah. happen which is really exciting i mean don't get me wrong some of them like you're still not going to see anyone play pit trap no but... never ever or never specialized ever. defenses no but I, I think specialized defenses could nah, happen nah, 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 nah. <laughs> no like if you're running specialized defenses for example you've got curry mori on the box for example where you can choose the element that kind of stuff or dragon with the heretic monk who where you choose your opponent's attacking ring that kind of nonsense um or toshi rambo that counts as every ring yeah that one wait that you don't you don't you don't like specialized defenses <laughs> it, well merlin it's a dumpster card i'm just trying to yeah you want it you want to keep talking about specialized defenses <laughs> it's, it's you know it's just looking through just i was just looking through the roll the roll lock things on imperial advisor and i thought about um what's the what's the one that uh Gives you plus one, plus one, and then plus one, plus one again if you've got lower honor and you can't become dishonored. Mm -hmm. it's, again, a, sorry? it's a crab card. Uh, it lets you. It gives you plus one, plus one 
kind of natively. And then if you're lower on her, it gives you plus one, plus one again. Oh, right? yeah, oh, pragmatism. yeah, pragmatism. I've played that before. It's, is, that uh, roll, is that roll up? I don't think so. Um, no, no. Oh, okay. It's just that um, it, you get plus one, plus one, and plus one, plus and one. It, and if you're lower on honor, yeah. If you're lower on honor, it's plus one, plus one, and the character can't be honored or dishonored. Yeah. yeah. So... That's fine. So it was kind of it came around in a day where ha like everyone was playing four shame and it your character gets four shamed instantly because you can't like dishonor it anymore. Mm, so it yeah. just had a ridiculous weakness to that. But when I played a little bit of Lion Splash, when uh oh the new guy came out the Hida Yakamo, um oh, yeah, who yeah, wants to be low on honor with pragmatism can do a lot of damage, but um, you need something to protect from Bale. Yeah, I think it's um, it's just that you, the fact that you have to be lower honor to really get the value out of it mm. is just too rough for a clan like Crab who don't care so much about being dishonored already. Like, their glory is just not high enough to usually matter. Mm. Like, it's not that big of a deal. But, um, yeah, no, I, I like it. It's a, it's a card I'd like to see out there a bit more. I mean, a plus two, plus two for one is always good, isn't it? Uh, it is, yeah, if you're, if you're low enough. Yeah. Yeah, I think when people play it against me, uh, it's always a little bit of a surprise, and it's always um, really challenging to deal with. The thing about Crab and when they play cards like that is the... So take Keeper, Keeper... Take Keepers, for example... So you get a bunch of keepers on the table. They activate their stronghold, and each of those things is two two. Yeah. And that that's that plus one plus one is surprisingly challenging. And if they have yeah. um, laboratory, it, it turns yeah, like a, a lot of yeah, little guys one. into a lot. But then they yeah. then they then they just kind of stop giving crap small characters to to help with that. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> well, they can't. They can't. They can't do that forever. You know, like the next uh, the cycle, like the actually, um... Merlin, if Crab can do anything forever now, actually, is the way that clan plays. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true. Yeah. They're the only clan that Bloody has Bloody Vader, eternity. man. Oh my <laughs> god. They can just recycle their stuff. I've yet to play just... against that properly, like a proper Mado three times uh, talisman yeah. deck. Yeah. I just haven't really played against it. Yeah, yeah, I want to. Either. I'm, I'm going to make it. I just haven't. It's all been about the EC for me for a while. Yeah, same here. So, I was trying to find so a viable deck for it. I haven't been mm. able to channel my inner janker quite as much as I'd like to. Yeah, because I was planning on taking crab, and then they restricted spyglass like two weeks before, and so I was like, mm, <laughs> "Punish gotta, them! Got to find a deck." <laughs> you defected to the lion yeah. and then took it out anyway. So the crab. So thanks, Tyler. You cost crab. I win. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I probably wouldn't have won playing crab, honestly. What? No, they're savages. They're just so strong. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. But they're. I think they don't win as much because they're predictable strong. I think that's the trick. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yes, I they're think super a strong, lot. but you know exactly what's happening. Yeah. The time you well, the goal them. is to be so you know exactly what's happening, but you can't do anything about it, right? You're like they were they were at that level for a while. It's like you know what they're mm. going to do, and you sit there and watch them do it because there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, true that. I don't know. I like it, and I'm dead keen to play some more. We've got, oh, heartbreaking news. We've got the Tell last me. ever Elf Island Ugh. tournament at Stratagem over here. It was like, realistically, it's my uh, favorite store yeah. over here, and they're closing. Absolutely. It's like their last day opening. They're shutting down because the they, market is garbage. What's, what's, the, what's the reason for that? It's just like a uh, cost thing? Retail is, is garbage, and it's just not yeah. viable to leave it open, basically. Mm. They're just such a good store, though. Like, it's so big, and... They run events and they're keen and they're in, you know they just they put the time in I guess yeah um, and the, the guy that owns it Mark he sort of said like he he thinks he succeeded in what he wanted to do he wanted to run a store that he would want to go to um, yeah and he's definitely done it like the only thing that stopped me going there all the time was the fact that it was so far away yeah when I I used to go like, there like a lot like I live like like lived like five minutes away from there and so. They used to do, like, board game night there on Wednesday used to be huge. Like, I'd go there every week, and there'd be probably sort of, like, 20 people playing board games. And it was yeah. always it's, huge it's, fun. It's comfortably at least double the size of any other gaming store here, as far as yeah. just play space is concerned. Maybe three times. It's really big. It's a really cool-sized mm. location. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, anyway, you know, it's, it is what it is. It's nice when the stores put the effort in. Four years, but, you know, hopefully something will pop up near there. Yeah, the guys hopefully something pops up north of the river. There's nothing up here at all. Yeah, well, there's a, there's a good games in Morley, apparently. Um, so maybe that'll become the thing. We'll see. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. Open one up, Jack. I'll sponsor you. Yeah, yeah, right. Eh? A dollar. But like the good game, <laughs> the good games in Jindalup used to be big. They used to have a big store, and then they moved, and now it's tiny. It's like a tiny shack in the in like the side on a side street, compared to what it was before. Yeah, that oh, sucks. Oh well. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll get something pop up, and it'll be very exciting. Again. Yeah, we just need some billionaire to come open a store, right? Don't care about the money they're earning. Just like give us a That's store. Dude, just just crowd, for the crowd fund that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, need. you need a store built on an iron mine, so even when they do die, retail. the iron mine keeps them going. <laughs> <laughs> Just give us money. Yep, absolutely. But um, oh, look, we've, looks like we're at time though. Merlin's given us a prod. Yeah. Um, we've run out of time to run through Bruna's deck with her as well. But maybe, Jennifer, should we see if we can have a crack at that one next week, mm. Merlin? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that next time. I'm, um, I'm speaking quite next keen time though. Yes. Next time, uh, so I'm obviously traveling, right? So I'm going to be traveling for three weeks for uh, Gen Con and then the Australian Kotai, and then that's just kind of three weeks. Mm. So uh, we got to figure out what our sort of recording schedule and things like that's going to be over the next couple of weeks. Uh, we are gonna, you're going to do our Gen Con special, right? You're going to pin down a couple of people and take them <laughs> yeah. and not Defin- leave your heads Definitely I'll... Well, see, I've got all this recording equipment that I that I would take to these events, but it's all back in storage back in Melbourne. I've got nothing here in Hong Kong besides my mobile phone. Just detour. Yeah. Fly to Melbourne. Oh, oh sure. sure, yeah. Because flying across the Pacific isn't expensive at all. No. You know, I'm doing that three times. I'm doing. I'm not even doing like return trips. I'm doing like round trips. So it's like Hong Kong to LA, LA to Melbourne, Melbourne to Hong Kong. I don't know. Maybe you can borrow some stuff. There's plenty of podcasters out there. I'm sure one of them will lend you a microphone. Yeah, but we gotta we gotta work something out. I was thinking about doing like a music video, um, taking a bunch of like video footage with my camera and things like that, and then putting it all together when I get back. Honestly, just get a little microphone, man, and just take your phone and just record it straight to the phone. Put a microphone in people's faces. Sit down with your games as soon as something stupid happens. Just hit record, whinge, hang up, and then do it again. And just I could take the like, actually I could take the GoPro to do yeah, some do live some live vlogging. <laughs> yep. Get get yourself a media pass. <laughs> Those things, Gen Con, Con man, Gen Con, Con. getting nothing. getting press passes. Pain in the so much work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'd be good. All right. Well, it has been good, Jack. Thanks very much for coming on again and having a shout about how you handed yeah. this to me. At <laughs> I hope some people learnt uh, about how good line is. But also, but you, also I keep it on the down low. Inspired some people. I'm sure there are some confused faces yeah. out there, and then but, there'll be some people. But yeah, about but just make sure to keep it on the down low so FFG do, don't find out the line's good. Just keep giving yeah, line yeah. cards because they're bad. That's true. Calling God yeah. Yeah. for a restricted list. And just <laughs> so on that note, we'll put the deck in the show notes so anybody can copy you. Yeah. Yeah, and um, we'll probably post the um, second place as well, the Crane AC deck, because that's quite interesting. We'll talk about that next week. Yep. Sounds like a plan. I dig it. Thanks again. All right. Take care. See you next time. See ya.